Welcome to Inside the Vandals, a weekly look at Idaho basketball with head coaches Don Verlin and John Newley, brought to you by the School of Journalism and Mass Media. And now, here's your host, Joe Simons. Welcome to Inside the Vandals. I'm Joe Simons. Each week I sit down with head coach Don Verlin and coach feel like a broken record every time we sit down. It seems the winning streak gets a little bit longer. One game this week, this one a victory over Portland State University, 77 to 68. Last game at home, want to start with that big energetic crowd, over 3,000 fans turned out. Talked about how much that meant to your team. Oh, that was huge. It was huge for not only our basketball team, but, but for our seniors. And, and I thought the way that the students and the people of Moscow came out and supported us in that last home game was fabulous. And, and I thought we turned in probably one of our best performances in the first half versus Portland State. I, we, we played an almost impeccable first half. We were on it offensively, we were on it defensively, and we were able to build a 17 uh, point first half lead. Mm. Yeah, talk about after that first half, Portland State makes a little bit of a run, but your team's able to compose themselves and put away the game at the they, end. They did a good job. They kept playing all night long. I thought their press bothered us a little bit. We had a, we had a bad little stretch for two or three minutes right there. We turned the ball over a couple of times, took a questionable, a couple of questionable shots, uh, didn't defend it as well as we could. But but like you said, I, I thought the thing that we did a really good job of was we responded to their runs. They got it back to six points. Uh, we came down, ran one of our staple plays. Uh, you know, we had Kyle coming open underneath and Jeremy on the, the top side. He was able to knock down a three and then make a couple free throws, got the, got the lead back up to, to nine and then I think 11 and, and we're able to kind of keep it at that margin the rest of the way. Senior night, one of your seniors stepped up big time. Point guard Landon Tatum, first double-double, 10 points. 10 assists, but zero turnovers as well. What a performance. What a great performance, and what a great way to finish out his home career uh, here at Idaho. And, and when you get 10 assists, now that's that's getting something good done. And, and like you said, 10 points, 10 assists, but no turnovers. Yeah. And what a fabulous performance. I thought all three of our seniors played well. I thought Jeremy Geiger played an excellent second half, and I thought Jim Bannamo was very active uh, throughout the game. So I thought our seniors did a great job of, of finishing their, their final game. Uh, at home. I thought they did a great job with that. Speaking of being a broken record, Kyle Barone, WAC Player of the Week again for the second consecutive week. Only had one game to do it in two. 25 points, 10 of 11 from the field, the third best shooting performance in Idaho history. Yeah, he was he was great, uh, especially in the first half. I think he had 17 first half points. Mm. I thought he was dominant all, all, all game long, but it was really good in the first half. And I couldn't be happier for Kyle. You know, it's, it's been all year since we had a WAC Player of the Week, and now we go back to back. Yeah. And, and Kyle really deserved uh, those WAC Players of the Week, and I'm really happy the way he's playing. He's going to need to play like that if we're going to make some noise in the WAC tournament. Steven Madison, another player with a double-double, his first career double-double, 15 points, 11 rebounds in the ballgame. He got excited to play against Portland <laughs> yeah. State. You know, back uh, home for him, uh, you know, even though he's from Vancouver, which is right across the river from Portland, uh, he always gets excited when we play a Portland team or an Oregon team. Thought he played with a lot of energy, and like you said, ends up with a double-double, 11 rebounds on the night. I thought he was really good offensive rebounding for this game and, and couldn't be happier with the way he played. He started off very quick, too in that basketball game. I thought our two juniors uh, really set the tone early and then our seniors kind of picked us up down the stretch. 16 and 11 overall now, seven and four in conference, just a half game out of second place, five wins in a row. Is it difficult not to think of the season as a whole at this point and think, wow, we don't have a chance of 20 wins, maybe sneak into the NIT if we're not able to take the WAC tournament. So many special things coming up now for this team with so much success. Yeah. Is it tough to take it, I guess old cliche, one game at a time? No, not really, because that's what we do all the time. Mm. And, and, you know, like I told our guys, just can't get ahead of ourselves. Uh, you know, what we got to continue to do is get better. we got some areas where we have to get better on. And, and one thing, one area that we've gotten a lot better in recently is our field goal percentage defense. That's been down the last five games. That's the reason for the winning streak, and we got to continue to do that. And we got us a tough road coming up. When you go to Utah State, Hawaii, and San Jose, that's a tough road, and we got to be on our game. So what we've got to really work, work on doing is just continue to get better game in and game out and, and see, let the chips fall where they may, see where this thing ends up. Hey Coach, one game this week, you go to Logan on a Friday trying to get that scheduling a little better for your guys. I know it's going to be a lot down the stretch. Talk about going to Logan, then you have to go to San Jose, Hawaii, and then right off to Vegas. So a lot of travel to wrap up the season. A lot of travel these last three weeks of the season, no question about it. Uh, we moved the, the Utah State game to Friday, so it would give our team uh, more time to rest uh, before we go to San Jose and Hawaii. 
Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a tough part of our schedule, no question about it. And always, uh, when you go to Logan, Utah with their home record, it's, it's, it's always a tough challenge. And, and they've struggled a little bit, no question about it. Uh, yeah, first time around, 57-54 was the final. What was the difference in that first game? You know, I thought we did a great job hanging in there. They, they led most of the game. I, I thought we never lost our composure. We were mentally tough. Uh, you know, and, and Stephen hit a big shot there at the end of the game to get us, I think, our first lead, and it felt like forever, and we were able to make a couple free throws right there at the end. Or actually, Mansa just made one to, to beat them 57-54. So uh, it'll be a tough game. You know, the two programs are very similar. They'll know our plays. We'll know their plays. It, it'll be a tough night, and it's senior night for them, and, and, and they'll have a lot of energy in that arena on Friday night. Yeah, you talk about the crowd, their, their home court advantage. What is it about the fans in Logan that really do such a good job of energizing their ball club? Well, it starts with their students there. Mm. Uh, their students, they, they're 5,000 strong every night, and they, they've been so good uh, there for so long, you know, 12 straight, 23 win seasons. I mean, they're, they're a good basketball program. Their fans come out and really support them. They have a lot of energy. They have a lot of chants and cheers and things that they do, and, and uh, that's what makes it a tough place to play is because the energy – they their fans bring every night and then also you fight the altitude thing a little bit you play about 5,000 feet it won't bother us any but you know guys get a little more tired mm. and 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 I think the thing that they've had is they've had a tradition of winning there for a long period of time and that's what their players expect to do is they expect to win. Coach it's really easy for fans during a winning streak like this to sort of forget what the team needs to improve on because you win the basketball game all as well and you mentioned earlier there's still some areas to improve before you get to Vegas in the conference tournament. What do you and the coaches really want to work on these last three games? Well, it's like what we worked on today in practice. What we've got to do is be more efficient in our execution on, on both sides of the ball. First and foremost, defensively, is we're getting better guarding the basketball. It's been our weakness all year long. Um, we worked really hard on that today, is, is, and it sounds really simple, but keeping your man in front of you, it's not that simple. And then the next thing is our post defense has gotten better, but we got to continue to work inside. Our, our post guys, we're, we're a pretty good defensive team when we don't have to double the post, and our post guys have got to be re, real physical down there. Jim and Kyle have done a great job blocking shots, but what we got to do is add a little physicality to our post defense. That's probably the, the main areas of improvement that we didn't need to make. Offensively, we've been pretty solid all year long. we got some guys who can really shoot it. And at this time of year, what you try to do is make sure your offense is running good and your guys are getting up a bunch of shots and they feel good about themselves. All right, Coach, look for six in a row going to Logan this week. Good luck. Thank you. All right, we will take a break, come back with more Inside the Vandals after this.